I'm Christine Malden, an Associate Professor and the Dietetic Internship Director at San Jose State University. I also work as a Relief Clinical Dietitian at Stanford HealthCare. Performing nutrition assessment remotely via telehealth is a topic of significant interest given the global pandemic that has necessitated physical distancing and virtual communications. The aim of this presentation is to provide clinicians some guidelines for performing remote nutrition assessments and to discuss the challenges of remote inpatient care. I have no commercial relationships to disclose. Upon completion of this educational activity, the learner will be able to compare data collection methods when nutrition assessment is completed in person versus remotely via telehealth, adapt nutrition focused physical exam for use in telehealth, and explain challenges related to telehealth in the inpatient setting. The purpose of a nutrition assessment is to gather relevant information that will provide the evidence for the nutrition diagnosis, as well as the basis for planning the nutrition intervention. Much of the data collected for nutrition assessment are ultimately used in the monitoring and evaluation of nutrition intervention efficacy. Nutrition assessment data can come directly from the patient per interview, from direct observations and measurements, from a medical record review conducted by the clinician, and or from the referring healthcare provider. This table shown provides a list of nutrition assessment data collected during a nutrition visit. And it also compares the typical data collection methods based on care delivery modality. As shown in the table, almost all of the data collected during in-person nutrition assessments can also be collected in remote nutrition assessments. This is because the majority of the nutrition assessments data are collected via medical record review and or patient interview. And these two methods of data collection are still applicable in telehealth. The Nutrition Focused Physical Exam, abbreviated as NFPE, is an evidence-based assessment tool used to identify malnutrition, micronutrient deficiencies, and nutrition status. Malnutrition is defined as the presence of two or more of the following six characteristics, inadequate energy intake, weight loss, subcutaneous fat loss, muscle mass loss, fluid accumulation, reduced grip strength. During telehealth, Adjustments may be needed because data to assess all six malnutrition characteristics may not be available. Two of the six malnutrition characteristics, energy intake and weight loss, are emphasized as the minimum data required to assess risk for malnutrition. It is recommended that all the data available for energy intake and weight loss, including any information available from previous admissions or outpatient encounters, should be evaluated. Whereas energy intake and interpretation of weight loss can be evaluated via medical record review and or patient interview, the other four characteristics are best assessed by physical exam. Clinicians should document visible findings as able and use clinical judgment in assessing and documenting risk for malnutrition, limitations in data for continued monitoring. The remote NFPE should start in the same manner as the in-person NFPE with a general visual survey over video conferencing. The head-to-toe assessment can still be performed via telehealth with a patient who is comfortable and willing to be guided. The camera angle and video quality are important factors for video visits, whereas the inspection process for visits conducted over the phone is dependent on the provider leading the patient through a series of questions and or via photos sent by the patient. For a guided NFPE via telehealth using video, the provider and the patient will need to establish the positioning of the patient and the camera so that the provider is able to see the area being assessed. The provider can then guide the patient and caregiver or family, if present, through an adapted version of the head-to-toe physical exam. Nutrition assessments done via telehealth should continue to follow a systematic approach. The goals when first approaching a patient are the same whether the visit is in person or via telehealth and begin with developing rapport, providing a reason for the visit, and gaining the patient's consent to participate in the interview and NFPE. 
the clinician may wish to discuss the benefits of NFP as it relates to the individual patient's condition. The table on this slide and on the next slide lists actionable steps and questions for guiding patients through an NFPE via video conferencing. These questions may also be used for an NFPE assessment conducted via phone. For example, to assess fat and muscle wasting, the clinician can guide the patient to show each area of the body, explain positioning, and ask questions such as, does your face appear thinner to you? Suggest patients look back at recent photos for changes. Other questions include, does your clothes, glasses, jewelry, and or dentures, if applicable, fit differently? Are you using your belt on a tighter notch? The second table lists actionable steps and questions for assessing micronutrient-related malnutrition. One of the main purposes of the NFPE is to catch otherwise missed nutrition issues. NFPE via telehealth could help clinicians collect more information and better assess patients' nutrition status compared with an assessment that does not include an NFPE. However, a telehealth NFPE will not produce as in-depth of an assessment as an in-person exam. Because remote NFPE requires more patient involvement, the clinician must gauge ability and readiness for a guided remote NFPE. Challenges with technology, difficulty observing fine details, and patients' inability to comply with the instructions have been identified as potential issues. The NFPE, whether done in person or remotely, requires varying amounts of time to conduct depending on the clinician's goal. A comprehensive and in-depth NFPE may or may not be feasible. As a clinician reviews a patient's health record prior to performing nutrition assessments, the clinician can prioritize specific NFPE components to assess. Clinicians have reported challenges with performing nutrition assessments remotely in the inpatient setting. Modifications to workflows must be implemented due to limited staffing on site. For example, teams will organize cluster care where care being provided is bundled. One clinician will do as many care tasks as possible at one time. Dietitians may rely on other clinicians to collect NFPE data. This cluster care model does require more communication between providers, especially with bedside nurses. In these cases, communications via phone rather than video conference are the most realistic. Team rounds can be accomplished via video conferencing. Clinicians have noted that one of the challenges with remote communications is the limited ability to gauge body language cues. With any technology-driven activity, there are requirements for user learning of the technology and best practices. Presented here are a few practical tips for clinicians to consider when using video conferencing to promote efficient and effective remote communication. Inpatient nutrition assessment is more time consuming when done remotely versus in person. If the dietitian cannot reach the patient directly, they will have to call the patient's nurse, which puts extra work on the nursing staff especially when they are already spread thin, often implementing cluster care protocols. A task that would normally take only a few minutes at bedside can now take five to 10 minutes when the clinician must try to get a hold of the nurse, explain who they are and what they need. The increased time demands are also the same, even when teams have on-site dietitians helping. There have also been reports of documentation delays and some clinicians face challenges accessing facility resources from off-site workstations or trying to enter orders remotely. Here are some examples of challenges faced by clinicians trying to perform a remote nutrition assessment in the inpatient setting. In the ICU, weights can be unreliable or even missing. This is because this patient population can have lots of rapid fluid shifts and they typically have shorter lengths of stay in the ICU, or sometimes bedside scales are not zeroed before use. It's really hard to catch wasting if you're not laying eyes on these patients. By the time a dietitian working remotely can get a visual, the patient may already be malnourished or have an increasing severity of malnutrition. Had the dietitian been on site, they likely would have caught wasting earlier and prevented it. In the future, if ICU remote work becomes necessary again, even a weekly picture of the patient's face or upper body could be helpful.
Another challenge with remote care is that documentation in the electronic health record is often delayed due to increased workloads for clinicians on site, and this can be compounded by inaccurate charting. For example, in the ICU, there are many lines and drains. Different but similar lines can often be confused in the documentation or not documented at all. As an example, forgetting to document an oral gastric tube when a patient is intubated or documenting a Keofi tube as a nasal gastric tube. These delays and inaccuracies require extra efforts and time to clarify remotely. If the clinician were on site, they could just walk into the patient's room or even peek through a window and have accurate assessment data. Finally, there is less camaraderie and trust among healthcare team members with remote work. Being present together and having face-to-face -face conversations is especially important when, for example, dietitians are trying to advocate for patients or to have more control over the nutrition plan of care. In addition, face-to-face -face interactions with patients are just more efficient and effective in delivery of nutrition education and nutrition care in general. Performing nutrition assessments remotely in the inpatient setting could be improved if visual communication and visual data, such as sequential photos over time, are available. In summary, here are the key points from this educational video. Almost all of the data collected during in-person nutrition assessments can still be collected in remote nutrition assessment. This is because the majority of the nutrition assessment data are collected via medical record review and or patient interview, and these two methods of data collection are still applicable in telehealth. Adaptations to the nutrition-focused physical exam can be employed in a remote setting. This does require more clinician guidance with positioning during the visual exam and relies more on pointed probing questions to gather data for malnutrition assessment. Performing nutrition assessments remotely in the inpatient setting could be improved if visual communication and visual data are available. In closing, listed here are references used in this presentation. I'd like to draw your attention to our recently published Nutrition and Clinical Practice article, Performing Nutrition Assessment Remotely via Telehealth. This article is a part of the NCP Continuing Education Program, linked here, and a podcast discussion of this manuscript was recently recorded. This educational offering was provided to you by Aspen, supported by an educational grant from Nestle Health Science.